Hi, I'm Scott. Welcome to Canard Boulevard. Today, we are going to be replacing the old 121.5 ELT in my airplane with a new 406 ELT. Coming up. So what is an ELT? ELT stands for Emergency Locator Transmitter. It's a little box I'll show you in just a moment that is inside your airplane. And what it has is a G switch so that if it sees a sudden impact, so if you come to a sudden stop, you hit something, it's basically a little tiny ball bearing usually held on to a magnet. And if, and if the jar allows the, the ball bearing to come away from the magnet, it sets off the ELT. And that ELT starts transmitting. Now back in the day, 121.5, which is our emergency frequency, is also the frequency that ELTs would transmit on. So if you were flying along and you were listening on guard, which is your 121.5, and you heard this distinctive whoop, 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 whoop sound, that's someone's ELT. And that you would know that, hey, an airplane's gone down, or more likely somebody had a hard landing and didn't check their ELT after that landing, and it's going off accidentally. Most ELT activations are not actually crashes. Satellites actually listened for that, and they could do limited triangulation and get within, you know, 100 miles, square miles of where that ELT was located and then they would send up SAR, helicopters, planes and so on and try to locate where that signal was coming from. Here in the US the Civil Air Patrol did a lot of that and you would see the Civil Air Patrol walking around the airport with a direction finder trying to figure out which of the airplanes on the ground had the activated ELT going off because the, again a hard landing can set off an ELT and if you don't check it after you land, make sure yours wasn't going off, you could end up with Cap walking around trying to find your airplane. So that was good, it worked most of the time. Sometimes if there was a lot of damage, the ELT signal didn't get out, maybe the antenna got sheared off, uh, maybe the, the thing didn't go off, maybe the batteries were dead. Well, it did work because of its inaccuracy and the, and the, the requirement to use direction finding equipment to actually pinpoint the source of the transmitter, It took time to find aircraft. Now up in the north in the Arctic where there was very little infrastructure, it was a godsend because if you heard an ELT, you knew somebody was down there and you know somebody could perish up there. So back in the 19, I want to say 1990s, it might have been 2000s, the FAA said, hey, you know what? Our satellites are no longer going to monitor 121.5 because we've got this new standard 406. So it's a 406 ELT. And the, the difference with a 406 ELT is that it's digital. So it does two things differently than a 121.5. But first off, a 406 ELT is also a 121.5 ELT. So it, also, it transmits on both frequencies. So if you are flying over and you hear that whoop, whoop, whoop on guard, yes, it's an ELT and it might be a 406 ELT. So that, it, that in terms of 121.5, the 406 ELT functions exactly the same way differences with a 406 ELT? Well, the first one is that it transmits digital data on 406 megahertz, which is now the frequency that the satellites listen for. Second, it has your aircraft's ID. So each ELT is registered to an individual aircraft. So if it goes off, COSFAST Sarsat, who operates these satellites, knows exactly whose ELT is going off because it transmits that ID along that identifies the aircraft. Now, because you have registered the ELT, they have a list of people to call. So they ha might have your phone number, and they say, hey, we've got your ELT, it's going off, are you okay? I'm like, oh, well, you know, I had a hard landing, maybe I didn't realize. Or maybe they don't get an answer, and they start calling your wife, and your wife says, well, he's on a trip to so-and-so, uh, he should have been landed by now. So, and then they can get the, the SAR action, or the SAR activity happening sooner. So that's a benefit. A third benefit is that you can wire it into your GPS. So now your GPS unit is sending GPS data to your ELT. So it knows its position and it transmits that up to the satellites. So now the satellites know within about 100 feet or so exactly where that ELT is and they know exactly where to send SAR. As a result, people that have, that have had activated ELTs have been rescued with inside an hour, which is just incredible compared to how it used to work with 121.5, where it might be days before they find you. Lastly, it also has a sounder inside the cockpit. So if the ELT is going off 
then it is making a hell of a racket inside the cockpit, and you know about it. So accidental ELT activations become a thing of the past because if it's installed properly, then you know that it's going off inappropriately and you can take the steps required to turn it off. Where the ELT gets mounted is usually in the center or in the rear of the airplane, somewhere solid that it's protected, and then you have a small antenna. Most aircraft, the antenna is going to be on the roof so that if the airplane goes down, it transmits up to the satellites. In a cozy airplane and other composite airplanes, uh, you can mount it inside the aircraft because the the composite structure is radio transparent. So my airplane has a 121.5 ELT in it. I need to fly to Canada. In order to fly to Canada, you must have a 406 ELT. So we are going to pull out the 125 ELT out of my airplane and we are going to install the new 406. First, let's have a look at what the 121.5 ELT looks like and consists of. So here you can see my ELT here. You can see it has an arrow pointing forward. That's the direction of travel. So if it detects impact G this direction, it's going to go off. The black cable coming out of there leads to the antenna, which is buried inside there horizontally, which is not ideal because it is, should be vertically polarized. So we're likely gonna change that. And then you can see there is a telephone wire looking thing. And it actually does have a modular plug, just like a telephone in there. And that runs up to here, a little switch that lights up and tells you if it's going off. It also allows you to trigger it manually. So if you have a forced landing, you can turn that on, that little switch on there, and it will actually start transmitting before you're on the ground. That's especially good with a 406 ELT because it transmits your position. So you can have that initial data burst go up to the satellites before you are even on the ground. And so they can start the uh, SAR action uh, long before you go down and even if you have gone down and the ELT is damaged, the antenna is damaged, at least you have that initial signal that's gone out. So we're going to pull this old ELT out of here and the associated wiring and we'll pull the antenna out and let's have a look at the new one. So this is the new one that just arrived. The antenna is in this box here. So there's the new antenna. It's a nice tiny little stubby antenna. It's only 15 inches, so it should be fairly easy to find a place to fit it in the aircraft. And as you can see, it's good for both 121.5 and 406. It does, it has a BNC connector in the bottom. It does require a ground plane, which is the biggest challenge in the composite aircraft because we don't really typically have a ground plane because it's composite. And then here's the goods in here. Here's the actual ELT itself. This is an Artex ELT. As you can see, it comes with a tray, so you will actually remove this, and it pops out. The tray gets mounted into the aircraft, securely mounted, and then the ELT gets mounted into the tray. On the front, you can see with the on, off, and arm switch, normally you will have it set to arm in the middle there. If we push it down, it will test it. If we push it on, it will actually start transmitting the antenna connection, and then the data connector. This is where our switch will go, as well as the RS-232 feed from the avionics. Another difference between this one and the old one, the old one uses four D cells that have to be changed annually. This one has an internal lithium battery that gets changed out once every five years. And of course, it's airplane prices, so it's, I think it's $200 to $300 for the ELT battery, which of course costs them probably $20 to manufacture. Other goodies we get in here, here's the little Mallory Sone Alert. This is our tone generator so we know it's going off. All the connectors to connect into that D sub for the, uh, the signal. And one of the nice features in this ELT is that as long as there's nothing plugged into it, this will never go off. So you can't accident, even though it's armed right now, because technically you can see it's in the arm position. So even if we have turned this on, and the antenna is connected, it will not transmit because the connector is not on here. And when you build that connector, two of these pins get jumpered and that's what enables this thing. So if you disconnect this connector, you basically disable the ELT and it's safe to ship, which is a really neat and cool idea. This is the replacement switch that will be going up in the panel. It allows us to um, arm it, turn it on, test it, and so on and this has its own connectors that we will be wiring up into the panel. And then we get a, sh a short length of BNC 
coax. I think it's six feet. Yeah, it's probably more than I need, so we'll end up co coiling that. But that just connects the antenna to the ELT itself. Kind of a cool thing that ACR does that if you uh, end up using one of their devices, I have also their portable rescue link, which you can see right there. And if you use it and you get rescued, they'll give you a replacement unit for free. Here's my old one. You can see a lot of the same things. Antenna connector, the button to on off arm. Here's the connector to go to the front panel. Uh, if it, go, it goes off, you can reset it. There's a light that tells you it's going off. A neat feature that these old analog ELTs had is a mic jack. So you could actually plug in your headset into that mic jack and transmit on 121.5 over top of your ELT signal, which is kind of cool. So you could talk to the SAR people. On this one, the back end is just full of batteries, D cells, and this is the transmitter portion on the front. So the old ELT was stored underneath the right rear passenger seat, and that's where I planned to put the new one. So I took the old tray out, positioned the new tray, then screwed it into place, and then put the new ELT on the tray just to make sure that everything was going to fit. And guess what? It doesn't fit. Well, it appears that because the new ELT is a little bit longer than the old one, it does not fit underneath this seat. I don't have the clearance in order to get the seat pan down on top of it and it's putting all the weight of a passenger sitting on top of the ELT that's no good so I think what I'm gonna do is it's actually gonna end up going underneath the front seat the front right seat here so you can see I've got it positioned here and I can actually have access to the wires here I've got a place to feed through wires the switch will go right up there and the antenna We'll run back there somewhere, or maybe up into the front, probably t towards the rear, however. And having it here, the seat pan, and just fit in there just fine. Now I do currently use this space for some ballast. This is 24 pounds of lead that I usually carry up here when I'm on my own just for um, weight and balance. I have another 24 pounds up in the nose. So I'm gonna have to find a new home for this ballast for when I'm flying on my own. Unfortunately, I was gonna use the uh, fastening system that was in the back to use the new one because they are universal uh, holes for the bracketry. That's not gonna work, so I will have to fasten this down uh, differently. All right, so I know the weights aren't gonna go up there and let's figure out where the tray is gonna fit. I made sure that it has room for the cables, put the tray down, marked where the holes need to be drilled, drilled those holes. Now I've got these uh, nut cert type rivet fasteners uh, that are an alternative to uh, quick certs so that you can rivet those in place. So I, I put each one in the main hole, then rivet it down in place. And that gives a female screw receptacle for the machine screw to go through the bracket and into the floor. Next, I'm going to take some 3M VHB tape, which you can see here, which is extremely, extremely strong adhesive foam tape that holds, uh, oh, I think it's 40 or 50 pounds per square inch. And that just gives it extra, extra bonding power over and above the mechanical bonding of those screws. So that tray is never going to move anywhere. All right, so I've removed the old one. There is, you can see the old ELT with the base on it. There is the uh, antenna that's been removed, the cable and the front panel control. So that will be going up for sale because it still functions and works great if you fly in the US. And now we'll start the wiring of the new 406 ELT. So days gone by, I went home and built this wiring harness to plug into it. It will connect to the switch. You can see the sone alert there, as well as the GPS feed. Now I've got to wire the antenna in. The cable comes with BNC connectors crimped on the ends, but I had to cut one off in order to be able to feed it through the fuselage. So now you can see me crimping a new BNC connector onto the end of that cable now that I've fed it through, which uh, I wanted to make sure it was absolutely perfect. So you can see me taking a lot of time to get it exactly right. Now that I've got the antenna cable done, let's get the ELT in there, plug it in, make sure it fits. Now I've got to cut out the opening to fit the new switch for the activation remote switch for the Artex ELT. So I'm just taking some measurements, making sure, you know, measure twice, cut once. And here I am with a Dremel tool. I'm just going to cut out that little bit there just to make sure that it fits correctly. A little bit of trimming and it fits. So now that I know that fits in there, 
I can get the wiring harness out and start feeding that wire through up to that switch as well as to the GPS in the panel that will feed the GPS coordinates to the ELT. The ELT will record the GPS, the most recent GPS coordinates during flight, and if it is triggered, that is the coordinates that it will transmit to the satellite. Now you can see me tidying up the wires here. I've hooked up the switch, and now it's time to hook up that wire to the GPS feed, which uh, is, I have done under the panel. I pulled it off the uh, GNS530, you can see there, has an aviation protocol output on its GPS uh, connector that I am feeding into the ELT. Next, here is the antenna where I mounted in the back. It is in the center of the aircraft, so it won't be damaged. I actually put a copper foil ground plane on the floor below this. I thought I took pictures of it, but apparently I didn't, so you can't see it. But there are uh, a radiating ground planes on the floor on the below that antenna to give it a, a sufficient ground plane so that it can transmit properly upwards. And that's it. That's the ELT install, the 406 ELT install in my Cozy. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, please leave them in the comments section below. And please, if you do like this video or you like this type of video, click like it so that YouTube knows that this is the type of content you want to see. And it really helps me out to know that as well. Plus, if you subscribe to the channel, every time I post a new video like this, you get notified. And that's a good thing. Thanks for watching.